Hi guys, it's Theo Stocker here at a very windy and almost rainy Southampton boat show. Um, and I've just come to have a look at the Pointer 22, which I thought you might be interested to see. It's not a brand new boat. They've been building them in Holland for about eight years. And Pointer yachts built at Jachtwerft Heech um, have been around for decades and decades. Uh, pardon my pronunciation, any Dutch speakers out there. Um, but the 22 is the smallest in the range that they do of the pointer yachts, which are the 22, the 25 and the 30. I test sailed the 30 recently and it's a lovely little boat to sail. And I expect the pointer 22 is just as nice to sail, though I haven't actually sailed her yet. This is the first one, uh, certainly recently in the UK, and they've just appointed a UK dealer. So if you did want to buy one, you can now do that in the UK. Uh, this is a little day sailor, really. There's, uh, not much to it. It's a designed to be a really nice boat to sail. Uh, it's a fairly narrow, long boat with low freeboard, uh, so it's all about the sailing performance. It's got a lift keel, um, so you can stick it onto a trailer, tow it behind a normal family car, and then when you drop the keel down, it's only 1.1 meters deep, um, so you can still access some pretty shallow water even with the keel down. So ideal for estuary sailing, potentially some inland waterways, um, but estuaries, harbours and sort of close to home coastal stuff. If you do want to stay overnight on it, you can do. There's a double bed uh, forwards in the forepeak. Um, there is a little bit of space under the cockpit if you wanted two quarter berths, um, but the yard also supplies a cockpit tent. So if you were staying on it overnight, you would put the cockpit tent up and you'd spend the evening in the cockpit and then you would go down below to sleep. And there's also a, a little porta potty down there as well. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty basic. So uh, for exploring on a, for a weekend or a day sail with friends, it's got a nice, large, comfortable cockpit so you could easily sail with four or five people on board. Uh, let's step aboard and have a look. Stepping aboard then, you come into this really large cockpit and this takes up over half the length of the boat. It's a semi-open transom, so you've got a little lazarette at the back there and you will actually helm from further aft than I am now. Um, here we've got two uh, seats outboard and we've got little backrests fitted to these. You can take those off, they pop out. Um, and then there's a little lip along the edge of the seat here. So you can sit outboard and brace against that if you want to, but actually it's very comfortable and feels really secure having these backrests. And if I had my kids on board, I would definitely have those in place because the boat doesn't have guard wires and this just makes the cockpit feel a little bit more enclosed. It's narrow enough so I can brace easily. Um, and then I've got halyards led aft uh, to the coach roof. Uh, these aren't taken to winches. This boat isn't big enough to need winches. But we've got a bank of clutches there uh, and then some uh, little cleats there for furling lines. Two neat rope bags just next to my legs here. And then rope bags further aft and all of the sail controls. So the main sheet, um, the jib and the spinnaker sheets are all taken after the helm so you can uh, sail it single-handed if you need to and your crew can sit here comfortably or it's still the sheeting angles are such that you can easily sail it two-handed as well. Um, down below then uh, you've got the keel lift mechanism and that swings up out of the water and it's done in such a way that the pivot point is kept out of the water so there's no corrosion of dissimilar metals in the mechanism there. Um, you've got a really nice little uh, double berth up forwards and as I said, space underneath if you wanted to slide a couple of children in or something like that. Um, it's worth saying on deck, uh, sorry, in the cockpit at least, we've got synthetic teak. Uh, and this is a process unique for pointer yachts that they actually uh, cut, the, cut the synthetic teak out, put it into the mould and then build the mould around on top of it, around it. So that's completely flush and really secure um, rather than being proud and peeling off or whatever. So that's a nice little detail. At the helm then, you can see that we're moving around a fair bit here on Southampton Water. At the helm, we've got a tiller steering, and that goes to twin rudders, which are transom mounted. Um, and the tie bar for those is actually external, uh, so you can easily um, adjust the towing angle if you need to. They're relatively close together, just gives you a little bit more grip when heeled. And it also means that you can centrally mount an outboard motor on this boat, I mean, you could put a petrol engine in on if you wanted to. On this boat, we've got a, um, a one kilowatt uh, e-propulsion motor, and that's actually got a remote battery which stores in the lazarette under the tiller. 
uh, and that's just the right size for, for the e-propulsion battery. Um, you can get a built-in Torquedo one with uh, a recess for the throttle, for a remote throttle. Um, this one has a throttle on the engine, uh, but more or less whichever motor you want to go for. You don't need a big engine, sort of three to five horsepower kind of thing, which is what this is, uh, three horsepower equivalent. Uh, it's more than enough power. The um, rudders are up at the moment, as you can see, but I've got an adjustable tiller. And neatly, that locks off outboard here if I want to. So if I need to leave the helm, or just generally when I'm leaving the boat in harbour, rather than this flopping around and having to tie it off with bits of string, it just clips onto a little hook there. I really like that. Adjustable length, I'm obviously healing towards me at the moment because of the wind, uh, but I've got a foot shock in the middle of the boat amidships, uh, just after the main sheet. And there are also two little bracing positions further out if we're healing over a bit more. Um, in terms of sailing that, it's a, basically a centre main sheet dinghy, so you can sail very nicely. Um, uh, we've got a six to one main sheet, I think that's six to one. Um, uh, it doesn't have fine control, but you can add that. But this is really for day sailing and cruising with friends. It's not really about racing. I'm sure you could race it if you want to. Uh, and you can fly an asymmetric for which there's a little bow sprit up on the bow. Going forward then, um, obviously there's no guard wires. Uh, this is originally built for the Dutch lakes and inland waters, so it's very much, that's the concept. Um, so you'll be, one, you'll be sailing this in sheltered waters, really. Um, on deck, you've obviously got a little bit of a coach reef to give you a bit of space over the bunk, um, and you could probably fit a spray hood onto that if you wanted to. Certainly in the UK, that might be nice. Here, we've got two to one purchase on the jib sheets, and you've got small adjustable uh, jib car tracks, um, which you can pretty much reach from when you're in the cockpit. Um, the, the mast is an aluminium mast, uh, deck stepped, um, and it's also on a little sort of hinged tabernacle. Um, so you can use a purchase on the forestay to lower the mast down, because obviously this is a trailer sailor as well. Uh, and then we've got an anchor locker. This doesn't have a clip on at the moment, you could very easily put a clip on uh, just to keep it a bit more secure or lock it away. Um, and that's just a, a shallow locker that you can fit a small anchor in so that when you are stopping for your lunch stop, um, you can drop the hook in. It's got a single mooring cleat up forwards and then a stem mounted forestay and um, jib furler. This one's got a, a sail cover on and then you've just got a short molded bowsprit for your off wind sails. Coming below then, you can see that this is fairly snug in here. There isn't quite sitting headroom on the forward berth, but there is sitting headroom um, if I sit effectively on the floor or on the hull liner of, um, on the bottom of the boat. Um, if you did stay overnight on this, this is camping on the water. Um, you can see here we've got the mechanism for raising and lowering the keel, and there's a, a webbing uh, strap there that does it rather than a, 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 a rope, so that's a little bit more um, uh, less bulky and then you've also got a, a lockdown line as well. Um, if you put cushions here you could actually be quite comfortable um, for sitting if it's really chucking it down out there. There's certainly just about enough space to sit. If you had a cushion yeah, and as you could get a couple of you put your little laptop up and you could watch a film or read your books for the evening um, and then you've got the forward berth as well. That's actually a really good size forward berth um, it's well over six foot long, a um, couple of metres long. You can see you've got the moulding for the anchor locker uh, and the drain going out overboard there. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much just uh, a void aft. Um, so there's no access for stowage from on deck. I feel like that would be quite a nice addition. It's certainly space to do that. I'm sure you could probably talk to the yard. I don't know whether they'd be able to accommodate it or not. Um, but if you wanted to take a couple of children, they could go in sleeping bags and on cushions um, aft and two parents there and then you could have your social and cooking space up in the cockpit tent. Um, it's a little day boat, a little weekender, but it's quite nice to have the option that if it's really horrible you can shelter or you can go on little mini adventures as well. Um, I like that. So that's the point at 22. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look on board. Um, it's a fun little boat. Um, I could imagine having some fun micro adventures uh, with kids on board uh, or as a couple, um, you're not going to cruise very far, uh, but you might have a lot of fun close to home. In terms of price, it's uh, £44,000 uh, for a basic spec, uh, including VAT, and then any options, extras, motors and stuff will be on top of that. Um, 
If you want to explore sheltered waters, um, I could imagine this boat would give you a lot of fun.